Pualugu Dam Construction Electricity Project. A name coined by Michael, and as if he knew the sound of it, would bring joy to the ears of Africans in particular, where it has become a steady need still to be met. Being in the dark is a very unpleasant feeling, and it is a major setback to most, if not all sectors in the modern world today. In the past decade, Ghana has experienced severe electricity supply challenges, costing the nation an average of $2.1 million in loss of production. The electricity supply challenges can be attributed to a number of factors, including a high level of losses in the distribution system, which is mainly due to the obsolete nature of distribution equipment and a lot more. The electricity supply crisis in Ghana is believed to have some impact on the mental well-being of the population, especially among university students that have become increasingly dependent on uninterrupted electricity supply. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the number one community which provides entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. With a strong belief that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's development, we present to you our special African development playlist. So subscribe and stop missing out. The construction of a high-quality multi-purpose dam is scheduled to begin in November of this year, according to the story of the multi-purpose dam irrigation project. The dam's development, which will take place in Ghana's Upper East region, would be the largest investment any government has ever made in infrastructure expansion in the northern region since the country's independence in 1957. Located at the Pualuga Bridge on the White Volta River, the multipurpose Pualugu Dam will have a maximum reservoir area of 350 kilometers and will serve a variety of purposes. In addition, the project will include a powerhouse with two turbines with a combined capacity of 60 megawatts and a continuous capacity of 16.5 megawatts, as well as a 15 kilometer overhead line that will export power to an existing transmission line. The dam's construction is expected to take around three and a half years to complete. The project will also include a 25,000 hectare irrigation plan, which will increase yearly rice production by up to 117,000 tons and maize production by up to 49,000 tons in the country, according to the World Bank. Other plots are expected to have production booster crops, such as tomatoes, sugar, sweet potato, sweet pepper, and onions, among other things. When completed, the project will act as a source of electricity for local populations in the farming area, while also assisting in the improvement of irrigation farming in the surrounding area. The dam will also aid in the reduction of the cost of power distribution to the northern regions of Ghana. While industrialization, modern commercial agriculture, value chain activities, as well as the general socio-economic environment, will all benefit from the project's construction. A significant component of the project's success will be its ability to serve as a catalyst for resolving perennial flooding in areas of northern Nigeria that are inside the flow path of the Baga Dam from upstream Burkina Faso in 2018. A total of 570 irrigation dams were scheduled for building in Ghana's three northern regions, with the majority of them located in the Ashanti region. In order to regulate water supplies and to even out floods and droughts, Dams are being built around the country, with building expected to continue beyond 2019. This aids in the storage of water when there is more than enough and the use of water when there is a shortage of water. The development of a multipurpose dam and irrigation system is currently underway. In 2018, VURA completed the feasibility study and moved on to the implementation phase. The primary components of the project are a dam with an elevation of 165 meters near the Pualuga Bridge on the White Volta River and a maximum reservoir area of 350 square kilometers, and a powerhouse consisting of two turbines with a combined installed capacity of 16 megawatts and a firm continuous capacity of 16.5 megawatts. An irrigation plan consisting of a weir and canal network with a height of 12 meters, as well as main, primary, secondary, and tertiary canals for around 25,000 hectares of land. According to the Ghanaian government, the project location is located on the White Volta River, approximately 16 kilometers east of the Pauluga Bridge on the main Tamal Bolga Tanka route. The White Volta River and the dam site marked the border between the Upper East area and the northeast part of the country. 
In order to achieve effective river basin management, the Pualugu Dam must be operated in concert with the Bad Grade Dam upstream on the White Volta River in Burkina Faso, as well as with the Akazumbo and Palm Dams downstream on the White Volta River in Ghana. In addition to an earth and rock fill dam on the banks, the dam will be constructed with a central roller compacted concrete core. In addition to flood management, the project's benefits include irrigation, fisheries, and power generation. The main advantage of the 25,000 hectare irrigation plan will be that it would be the largest in the country, which will be a significant benefit. In the Upper East and Northeast regions, the program will have a positive impact on economic activity because it will increase the productivity of farming and attract large-scale commercial farms, which will be supported by around 15,000 outgrower farmers, it will be beneficial. Increasing yearly rice production in the country by up to 117,000 tons and maize output by up to 49,000 tons, respectively, has the potential to reduce imports of both commodities by 16% and 32%, according to the project's proponents. Saving foreign exchange and also stabilizing the pricing of certain items on the domestic market are two benefits of this strategy. In addition to onions and tomatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet peppers, and watermelon are among the crops that will profit from increased output. The program will also serve as the foundation for the development of an agricultural business to process the produce of the farms. This program will aid in the implementation of the government's strategy of planting for food and jobs, as well as the One Area, One Factory program. Development of aquaculture and fisheries are two more potential benefits of the project, increasing Ghana's renewable energy capacity and helping the country achieve its obligations under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change are two of the goals of the hydropower component of the project. UN FCC Ghana's goal is to increase renewable energy to 10% of total energy consumption by 2030, up from less than 2% currently. Today, the project will include a solar component, with solar energy serving as a supplement to hydroelectricity in order to improve the reliability of the energy supply. Aside from facilitating access to electricity in Ghana's northern region, the project's electrical infrastructure would also improve the reliability of power delivered to NEDCO, the country's electricity distribution business, in the region. During the wet season, the dam will also give protection from the perennial floods that occur in the White Volta Basin. It will also aid in the management of water overflow from the Bagger Dam. Property damage will be reduced as a result of this, and financial security will be improved. 52,000 people were affected by flooding in the area in 2018, which resulted in 34 deaths and two individuals going missing. Land and property were also damaged as a result of the fires. In the Upper East region, the sod was officially cut for the building of the Pualugu Multipurpose Dam and Irrigation Project to begin. The President of the Republic Nana Addo Dankwa Akufo Addo officially launched the project. Originally conceived in the early 1960s, the $993 million project is being funded entirely by the federal government and will be completed by 2020. Consequently, the sword-cutting ritual was regarded as historic in nature. When fully operational, the multipurpose dam will address three major issues – irrigation, hydroelectric generation, and flood control, among others. Chinese state-owned hydroelectric engineering and construction company Sino Hydro is in charge of the project, which is projected to be completed in around four years and two months. It has also become necessary due to the annual floods and deaths that occur in the areas that are within the flow path of the Baga Dam from upstream Burkina Faso. The event was attended by Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Bawunia and Ministers of State, including the Minister of Energy, Mr. John Peter Anwu, members of Parliament, and representatives from the Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Chief Executive levels. Additionally, hundreds of citizens, including traditional rulers from both the Upper East and the Northeast, attended the celebration. These are the regions that are the primary beneficiaries of the initiative. Furthermore, a Chinese delegation from Sino Hydro, the Chinese state-owned hydropower engineering and construction company that will be implementing the project, addressed a derbert to commemorate the sword-cutting ceremony at Pualugu Hydroelectric Power Station.
During his address to the nation, President Akufo Addo remarked that the project's start was a fulfillment of his promise to the people of the area, which included, among other things, addressing the annual flooding of the area and its disastrous consequences on the inhabitants. This is in fulfillment of the promise made by the NPP government to the people that we will not break our promises and that we will maintain them. President Akufo Addo stated that the project would be the single largest investment ever made by any government in the country's northern region, which the president referred to as amazing. He stated that the government considered that infrastructure development was critical to the transformation and development of the North, and that irrigation continued to be the most important factor in guaranteeing food security in the region. Furthermore, the president stated that the project was expected to improve. The country's annual rice production by around 117,000 tons, reduce rice imports by 16%, and contribute to the expansion of the aquaculture sector. In addition to other benefits, President Akufo Addo stated that when the dam is built, the cost of power delivery to Ghana's northern areas will be reduced, while industrialization, modern commercial agriculture, and value chain activities, as well as the general socioeconomic environment, would all benefit from the project's completion. He pointed out that it would also provide the much-needed impetus to the One Village, One Dam policy, the One District, One Factory policy, and the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative, among other things. He claimed that approximately 2,200 Ghanaians, both skilled and untrained, were likely to get employment when the project's construction began. According to Mr. Zhu Chen Yang, vice president of the Chinese power company, his country would continue to support Ghana in the development of infrastructure. He also pledged the readiness of his country and company to adhere to all regulatory framework, guiding the successful completion of the project. During a meeting with the building business, the Minister of Energy, Mr. Peter Imu, instructed them to closely comply to the project's local content requirements, which means that citizens from the catchment region must be involved in the project's construction. He stated that it was for this reason that the Ministry of Energy devised a policy for local content regulations in the power sector, which he described as follows. As a result, he noted, the hydroelectric and solar power facilities would improve renewable energy generation while also increasing the reliability of power supply to the northern electrical distribution firm. Tango is the most popular regional minister in the Upper East region, according to NETCO. President Muhammadu Buhari was hailed by Abiy Asher and the Northeast Regional Minister. Mr. Solomon Boa for following through on his promise to the people of the North, saying that it will eventually bridge the gap between the North and South urban migration among the youth in the North. The traditional territory of the Overlord of the Man program is in the Northeastern region. Gu Abdullah Nabohar Gu Abdullah Muhammad Sharika delivered a speech, which was read on his behalf by the paramount chief of the traditional area of talent. Others urged the government to put in place efficient measures to improve rice production throughout the country's northern regions by assisting rice farmers in preparing their crops for the project's launch on the international market. The overlord further stated that, once completed, the project would aid in the revitalization of the Pilu Tomato Factory's electricity generation and the influx of additional funds into the pockets of the unemployed who live in the catchment region. Since the early 1960s, researchers have been studying the site of the Pilu Dam. In the early 1990s, the Volta River Authority undertook preliminary feasibility studies on potential hydroelectric sites in the White Black and Ott River basins, which led to the establishment of the Volta River Authority. The present project activities began in 2013 when VRA received financial assistance from the agents Francaise to launch them. Using technical assistance from the World Bank, France's development agency carried out a feasibility study and environmental and social impact assessment in preparation for the construction of a multipurpose dam and irrigation plan. The VMRA finished the study in 2018 and is now moving forward with the project's implementation phase. The project location is located on the White Volta River in Ghana approximately 16 kilometers east of the Paul-Luca Bridge on the main Tamal-Bolgatanga Road. The project is funded by the Ghana Development Bank, 
a powerhouse consisting of two Kaplan turbines with an installed capacity of 60 megawatts and a solar power plant with a capacity of 50 megawatts would be constructed near the Paluga Bridge on the White Volta River at an elevation of 168 meters above sea level. A reservoir covering an area of 262 square kilometers would also be constructed. Approximately 25,000 hectares of land would be covered by an irrigation plan that would consist of a 20-meter high water weir and a canal network connected to it. The irrigation plan, which will cover 25,000 hectares, would be the largest in the country and will serve to increase economic activities in the Upper East and Northeast regions. This project, with its numerous benefits, is really a ray of sunlight for Janaeans in so many sectors such as hydropower and agriculture. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Share our video with friends and family, give our video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our community for more enriching information. Help our channel grow.